Hey guys, so today we're going to get Octoprint set up on one of my newer acquisitions, the uh, CR10S. I've already printed out a case that I want to use and I have an SD card and I have the website open. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step of going to the website, getting the image onto an SD card and then getting Octoprint set up and plugged into the printer. So are you ready to do some learning? Get your thinking caps on. So here we go. Ready? Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to Where Nerdy is Cool. If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is a, a regular visit for you, thank you for being a regular visit. In all of the cases, if you're not a subscriber yet, please mash that button over there. Click the bell too so you get the notification so you don't miss any of my videos. So thanks. So today I have a Raspberry Pi 3 and what I've done on my other printers is all of my printers have an OctoPrint uh, Raspberry Pi 3 set up. They have the webcam and they're plugged in and that's how I do a lot of my remote monitoring and in, in a lot of cases that's how I do my prints and it's such a super convenient way of doing things. The software co costs nothing. The Raspberry Pi 3 doesn't cost much of anything. Essentially all you're investing is the uh, the Raspberry Pi, a, a good webcam, and the SD card software, and, and off you go. So I'm going to try to take some of the confusion out of this for you, because I know some people have thought about doing this, but they're not sure. If you already have OctoPrint, great. If you have thought about getting it and you're wondering what it's all about, well, here we go. So uh, in my hot little hand here is the Raspberry Pi 3. I got a couple cameras set up here, so I'm hoping it's at least in focus. Uh, I bought this from Amazon.com. I bought one of the bundles that includes the power cord, um, has the uh, Raspberry Pi 3, and also includes the uh, SD card inside. Um, this one also has a heat sink on there. Um, if you if you really want to be crazy, if you're really worried about you know you know cooling off the processor, you could even put a 40 millimeter or bigger fan on this, and it would definitely make a, a decent impact. But for what we're gonna do, the included heat sink is just fine. Uh, and then it also came with a 32 gig SD card and uh, I have the little adapter here so I can put this into my computer here. The other piece of the puzzle is the webcam. Now this one that I'm using, this is the C615 and what you can do on the website, you can Google you know, uh, web, webcams known to work with Octoprint and down here they have a whole list of tested makes and models. And I've had really good luck with the Logitech web cameras. And uh, this particular one, I uh, just gotta find it here. C615 is right here. And it's tested on the Raspberry Pi 3. It even gives us the, uh, uh, the parameters to enter in. So if we wanna have an HD picture and how many uh, frames we wanna have, uh, someone has gone ahead and done that work for us. So that's where you can find out if the webcam you have or the webcam you're looking for um, will work. The other thing too is a lot of people 3D print their own brackets for their web cameras and uh, I've done that in some cases but I really love these small little flexible Gumby like uh, tripods. Uh, to me they're, they're usually $9. I usually pick one up every time I go to Best Buy. They're just extremely convenient and perfect for what I'm looking to do. But if you have an enclosure or if you have a special setup where you really want to have that camera up and out of the way someplace else that's reasonable too. So just because I'm doing it this way doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just, it works well for me. So first steps. So what we're gonna do here on the computer, we obviously have to go to octoprint.org and this has all the information. You're gonna get a, a pop up here and uh, we can close this out where uh, the developer is asking for your support and if you wish to do so, that's fine. Uh, of course, we have the cookies pop up here and we're gonna scroll on down to download and this is where we download and set up Octopi. And let's see. They're letting us know, you know what hardware they recommend. The Raspberry Pi 3 is really what they recommend. And there are other ways you can do this. They have other uh, packages you can download. But for this video, we're going to focus on using the Raspberry Pi 3 because that's the most popular. So I'm going to download this. I have download, downloaded this before in the past, but I am going to go here, I'm going to make a new folder, and let's call it, uh, let's see, where nerdy is cool, and we'll call it Octoprint, because I have a couple of different folders already, 
and we will go ahead and download that. And it's a fairly sizable download. It's 563 megabytes at the time of filming. Uh, so depending on your internet connection, it may take a few minutes or it may take a little bit longer. I'm up here in the boonies of Maine, so my internet speed is uh, only 100 meg per sec. So, But we'll give it some time to download that and we'll get ready for the next few steps. Okay, while this is downloading, there are a few additional tools that you're going to need. Uh, I'm doing this on a Windows 10 uh, laptop, so the additional pieces of uh, software you're going to need to get this configured, uh, you're going to need the, uh, I'm trying to recall the name of it here on my desktop, uh, the Win32 Disk Manager, uh, I'm sorry, Disk Imager. What that does is that's going to take this image file uh, that we're going to decompress here in a moment, and that makes it so that that image can be put on the SD card. So that's one piece, and I'll try to put a link here in the bottom uh, where you can get that. Additionally, you're going to want to have PuTTY. Uh, PuTTY is a Telnet program. That's going to be how we communicate with the Raspberry Pi once we have it connected on our network. Uh, speaking of network, another thing we're going to want is going to, we're going to want a port scanner. And the one that I use is called Angry IP Scanner. And when you install that, it will scan your network and will determine where the Raspberry Pi is broadcasting on your network. That will give us the IP address so that we can use PuTTY to connect to it. Um, the other thing, you don't really need it, but I have Notepad++. It's a free download. Um, anytime you're messing with stuff, uh, for example, configuration files, you can use Notepad just fine. Uh, do not use stuff like uh, Microsoft Word or uh, uh, any of those other uh, packages because what they're going to do, they're going to add weird characters to the text. You just want raw text. So uh, definitely use Notepad or Notepad++ when we do the configuration setup. Okay. While we were speaking, my wallpaper changed, but here is our folder. And that is the file that we need. And we need to decompress this. So this is a zip file, you need to decompress it. Now Windows has a built-in decompression uh, utility that will do this. I happen to have 7-zip, I really enjoy it. It works very well for me. So I'm gonna have 7-zip decompress this into a folder for us. Okay, and now that that folder has been un, uh, decompressed, we can see the contents, and let me stretch this out. So there is our uh, image file, uh, which ends in an IMG extension. So what we're going to do now that we have that is, let me shift this over here a little bit. We'll get the, and it's gonna ask for permission to run. Okay, so this is the Win32 disk imager. So what we need to do is we need to tell it the location of the file that's gonna be the image. So in this case, uh, let's see, I had put it on my desktop and I'd called it where nerdy is cool. And that is the image file right there. We're gonna open that. Now this next, next part, be very careful, okay? So what we're gonna do is I have my SD card here and dun, 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 I have the drive in there. So let's get this fellow put in. Okay, well this works out well because it sees the uh, SD card as the E drive, which is perfect. And right here, we wanna make sure that that's where it's going, is the E drive. Now, I haven't heard of this happening to anyone recently, but sometimes what could happen here, this device uh, sometimes could default to your C drive, which is your hard disk. And uh, obviously, you don't wanna overwrite whatever you have on your laptop with uh, OctoPrint. So just make sure that the device um, is your SD card, and that's the destination for this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click right. We are sure. And that is going to begin to go through the process of writing the image to the SD card. Okay, that has been completed. And we can exit this. And no, we don't wanna format it because Windows now sees uh, uh, that drive available and wants to format it. Say no to that. Okay, so the next part is we, while we still have the SD card uh, plugged into the computer, we need to go into the configuration file. And what I will do is I will pop back into Octoprint's page and it tells us what we're doing here. So we have to configure our Wi-Fi connection by 
editing octopi-wpa-supplicant.txt on the root of the flashcard. Um, do not use WordPad or text edit. Um, those editors are known to mangle the file, making the configuration fail. We're going to be using Notepad++ in my case. And this is a change from the previous version. The previous version, um, you would go to octopi-network.txt, and uh, that's, that's different now. So they've made some improvements on the network setup. I'm curious how that will work. And Okay, there's some of the directions we're looking at. All right, so now let's go back and let's look. So now we're looking at the E drive, which is the SD card. And what we want to do is right click and edit with notepad. Okay, so right here are the instructions. Use this file to configure your Wi Fi connections. Just uncomment the lines prefixed with a single pound of the configuration that matches your Wi Fi setup and fill in the SSID and passphrase or password. So in my case, what we have here is in um, my router, I'm using WPA WPA2 secured. So we're going to remove that pound, and I'm going to remove this pound, and I'm going to remove that one, and that one. Okay, and the SSID of my network, okay, so in my case, mine is named Olympus, and I'm not going to share my password with everybody, so sorry about this part. So, okay, once that is done, you're going to go up to File and Save, and then we can close out. Okay, and now let's go ahead and close that guy. We're going to leave the web page open. And in Windows 10, what you want to do is you want to right click on the USB and we want to eject the mass storage device. That is a safe way to remove the device. All right, so now we have our SD card. And on the back of the Pi, the SD card goes in like so. It's a very, very thin, I know every now and then when I look at these, it's like, where does the SD card go? But it's right there in the back. And then what we're gonna do here, I have a power cord here. And let's make sure we have that set up properly. Okay, we have lights and blinking. Okay, so we're gonna give it a moment to boot up. It, it, it takes about a minute or two to uh, fully boot. So what we're gonna do on the computer screen here, we can uh, minimize this stuff here. And what we have to do, we gotta find out where in the network it is. So we're gonna use Angry IP Scanner. And we're gonna tell it to go ahead and scan my network. And it may take one or two tries to locate where it is, but uh, it will definitely have, you know, octopi dot, et cetera, et cetera, in front of it. I also have an, uh, one plugged in as well, my Ultimaker one, so that will probably uh, show up in this listing as well too. So, all right, so we have some stuff that came up, but it hasn't quite identified what it is. So let's discard this, do it one more time. Got it. All right, so this is the one we're looking for right here, which is Octopi.local. And I guess what the one for my Ultimaker is not turned on, so. Uh, usually that wouldn't be over here, but uh, the printer is off and it probably has to pie off too. But that's not important. So we're interested in 192.168.1.3. I'll chop that down just so I'm keeping track here. Okay, so that, that's going to be a little alert, so that's fine. All right, here we are. So we log in as Pi. The default password is Raspberry. And voila, there we are. Okay, so the first thing we need to change is we need to change the password. 
So we're going to do that by typing P-A-S-S-W-D. Okay, it wants to know what the current password is, that's Raspberry. Okay, we're going to make a new password, so... And we're going to verify it. Fantastic. And what I can do is I'll uh, get out of here. Let's just open up a web browser here. 2.168.1.3. And that's going to give us the web version. And we're going to be guided through the setup. Okay. Hello. All right, I'm just going to use my usual. That'll be fine. And it will tell you if the passwords do not match, which is nice. Um, so essentially, I mean, you can read through this, but you, frankly, you, you do want to have access to control. You want to have a username and password um, to get in and out of your uh, device here. And, oops, that's the problem here. Sometimes you don't see the full thing here. So we're going to keep, the, uh, keep that enabled. And next. Okay, this is going to be the connectivity check. So it's going to make sure it's connected to the internet. And uh, we're going to have it check every 15 minutes, which is the default. Uh, that's where it's going to go. And we can test it. It's reachable. So we will go ahead and do that. And then we'll go to the next step. And if we're going to use any of the plugins, this is where you can allow that or not allow that. So we're going to enable that. And we'll hit next. Don't have any profiles for Cure I want to import over. Okay, the printer. We'll give this a name of CR10S. And I'll put down here. Reality CR10S. And I don't really need to fill any of this stuff out because everything that I send to the Octoprint uh, is already uh, rendered and sliced through uh, Simplify 3D or Cura. So uh, if I was going to be using Octoprint to do some of that work, I would set that all up here, but I don't need to do this. And they give you a couple one. I never leave your printer running unattended. And we hope you enjoy Octoprint. Fantastic. So here it is. Here is Octoprint. Okay, so here's where we have left off. So I have the Octoprint uh, up and running on the Raspberry Pi 3. I have plugged in the uh, USB to the uh, camera as we showed earlier. So we had video, we got that working. Uh, I don't have the printer turned on, but I do have it uh, connected. And of course, because it's uh, uh, get a power source and such. Um, you can see the display. The next step I want to show you, this is kind of an advanced setting and it's moved around a little bit since the last time I installed Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi 3, but it's still worth showing you. Um, I don't want to confuse anybody, but uh, recall when we went through the, uh, uh, we went through the angry IP scanner and we were trying to find where this device was on my network so I could have the IP address and then log into it. Well, here's the thing. I have all kinds of Octoprint servers on my network. So uh, obviously it would be really nice to give it a custom name. So let's figure out how to change the host name. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go into Putty again. We're gonna put in the IP address. And I'm going to go in as pi. Now I've already changed mine, but I wanna show you where it's located. And a little giveaway here is that when you log on, you can see it's pi at CR10S. So that tells you that I've already changed the host name. That's fine. So to get into the advanced configuration, you do sudo, and that is raspy-config. Now I say it's the advanced configuration, and largely based on the instructions I've seen here, everything is done right through the web. And it used to be there was more done through the Telnet client, but in an effort to make it easier to use, uh, you know, you, there's less you have to do in here. So let me go in here. 
and I have to get my password one more time. It used to be with previous versions of this, you would have to go into the advanced options and span. Um, you had to do the uh, file system change so that it would take advantage of the full uh, system there. But now this version of Octoprint already does that for you. But in order to change the host name, that is here under network options. I believe it used to be under advanced options, but it's not there no more. And there, the first option, N1, is where you can change the host name. And we hit OK. And as you can see, what I have entered in there is CR10S. So when this broadcasts on the network, I know exactly which one this is. So we'll hit Finish. Uh, we're not going to reboot because we made no changes. And what I'll show you now is let me go under Angry IP. And here you can see 192.168.1-3. That is now CR10S.local. So that uh, I know if when I'm scanning through this list and I'm wondering, you know, if you have multiple, you know, Octoprint servers running and you see multiple Octopi on there, you're going to wonder which is which. Uh, you can also see down here further um, that my Ultimaker 2 uh, is also sitting, it also has a uh, Octoprint server and that's the IP address it's sitting on. And the rest of these are just, uh, you know, my, my network storage devices, my router and uh, my, my desktop PCs. So that's how you do that step if you wish to do so. Uh, especially if you're going to have multiples of these devices running. So let's get out of here and uh, let's get out of here. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so we've covered all the big stuff and as you can see, here we are, we're back at the, uh, the setup. So our next step, now that we have, if you look under control, uh, we have the webcam. And there it is. And now that we have all of this stuff going, what we can do, let me turn the printer on. This is gonna be a little bit loud because I got a rattly fan. Now you can try the automatic settings, serial port auto, baud rate auto, and see if it connects. And sometimes that will work. And it detected it. How about that? And what you'll see on the display is, I missed it with my GoPro here, uh, you will see the uh, system uh, kind of uh, do a restart here. You'll see the logo come back and then it'll come back to the screen. So that's fine. Now, all we have to do now is, for example, if I go into Simplify 3D, as I can prepare to print, I can save to disk. And what I like to do, I like to keep a folder and what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new one. I'll call it CR10S Octoprint. I just like to keep track of what I'm sending to the Octoprint server. So there is that. And that has been saved. So now I can minimize this. And now what I can do is I can click on Upload. And I can go back to Documents. See our tennis octoprint. I can upload this file. Okay, it uploaded a few seconds ago. And then I can click on print. There it's going to go. And now that it's taken over, you can see that it's starting to adjust the temperature. For example, the bed is going to go to 60 degrees Celsius. The bed will go up to, I'm sorry, the tool will go to 215. And then when it does its probing, the uh, heat will be turned off from the nozzle. And then before it starts printing, it'll, it'll heat back up again. But this should work out really well. Now, other things you can do, you can control the printer from here. There's your controls right there. But right now, it's, it's, it's loading a print. So it's getting everything warmed up. Terminal, uh, that's another way of doing exactly what I've been doing in S3D for the machine tools. Uh, this is showing the data going back and forth there. I have a time-lapse setup. So I currently have time-lapse turned off. If I wanted to turn that on, I could do so, but I would have to do so before the print starts. And this is another setting I'll, I'll get back to here as a wrap-up. Now, time-lapse, this is where if you want to make those really nice videos that show time-lapses of all your prints, this is one of those things where you want to turn and what I do is I set the time, okay? 
If you do it by Z change, there's a, there's a few different settings you can experiment and, and try, but I like the timed ones. And I've pretty much left everything here to default. And then what I do is I save this as default and save changes. So every 10 seconds, that thing's gonna grab a picture. So highlight you and click print. And then what you'll see on the graphing is you can see that the bed is heating up. Now, the temperatures are a little high because again, I, I ordered a print a few minutes ago. I kind of backtracked to what I was doing here. But what you'll see is those guys will go up in temperature. And the other thing we have going on here too, is we have a camera. Let's make sure it's out of the way here. Let's find a kind of a good position here. I like these little squishable legs here so I can get it lower or higher as needed. And we will let this print go. So when we come back, uh, we'll have the time lapse and uh, well, we'll see how well everything worked out. Okay, we're back and the print is completed. I shut off the printer because it's really loud. And as you can see here on the computer screen view, this is the view from the webcam. I kind of hit it here uh, when I came back to the desk, but uh, so there it is. That's the view you would get. And uh, it, like I said, it's a really neat setup. It works very, very well. I've been very happy with these things. The, uh, if you want to look at the time-lapse we created, you'd go under the time-lapse tab. And what you could do here, if you didn't want to do anything with it, you could keep it, or if you want to delete it, that's what the trash can icon's for, or you can download it, and that's what this does here. Okay, so a couple of things I want to point out here on this configuration. I just showed you the basics. This will get you up, running, and using it, and, and that'll work great. If you want to get into the more advanced features, I may do a video on that, but I'm sure there's other videos out there or other uh, articles that will go much deeper than I have. Uh, just for the sake of brevity on how to get this up and going and using some of the more advanced settings that Octoprint offers. Uh, the other item I want to mention is that if you're having difficulty, if you're doing this and you're trying to get your setup and you're having a real just a darn hard time uh, seeing this thing on your network, if your Wi-Fi is acting up or you just don't know what to do, one of the first things you can do is reboot your wireless router. That, that I know that sounds kind of crazy, but uh, various routers have various issues with how many addresses they hand out over time and most folks don't, re well, unless it's a power flicker, they don't reboot their uh, router very often. And in my case, it hasn't been rebooted probably in months. And I was having difficulties with my Octopies. I had several of these just up and stop working on the wireless network, couldn't figure out why. Decided to go ahead and reboot the router and they're back. So. Just a tip for you if you're having difficulty with connectivity or if you've had some drop off and it makes no sense why, it's probably a good idea maybe once a month to give the wireless router a reboot and that might solve a lot of problems for you. Okay, so that said, I just want to say thanks for watching. I've noticed our numbers are going up, up, up from subscribers to views to watch time and stuff like that. And that's awesome. I really appreciate you guys you know, checking me out and following my videos and commenting on my stuff. I really enjoy the feedback, even if it's bad feedback. But like I said, I've been really enjoying doing this and the feedback I've been getting from the YouTube community has been fantastic. If you wish to support my efforts, I have two ways you can do so. Patreon.com, uh, I am there, uh, where nerdy is cool. And if you wish to do a donation via PayPal on my YouTube homepage, there's a donate via PayPal link up there. And if you wish to throw me a couple bucks for coffee or more or less, whatever you want to do, I appreciate it. So thank you very much for, well, first of all, watching my videos and, well, sitting through it this far. So anyway, we're going to wrap up. I got a whole bunch of stuff I'm going to put together here to get this video complete and out to you guys. I thank you guys for watching. And until the next one, remember, this is where nerdy is cool.